Here is a Sufi story. Once upon a time, there was a village. In the village, there was an ancient wall. Now, no one knew since when this wall existed, but there was a mystery associated with this wall. No one in the village knew what was on the other side of the wall. In the past, whenever people climbed the wall and they would look on the other side of the wall, they would smile widely as if the baggage of the world had suddenly disappeared from them and they would just jump on the other side, never to return again. All their jewels and their riches and their shops, everything just remained there and they never cared. The thing about this was that it didn't look like people were hypnotized. In fact, it looked like when they were able to see on the other side of the wall, they were for the first time dehypnotized, as if for the first time they were alive. Because there was so much mystery associated with the wall, the villagers devised a strategy. The next time someone were to climb the wall, they would connect iron chain uh, on the leg of the person. So even if they were to jump on the other side, the villagers would be able to pull them back. And that's exactly what happened once when someone was ready to jump on the other side. The villagers, as planned, connected the chain on his leg, but they were disappointed because when the person was pulled back from the other side, he had lost his speech. Now, how do I interpret this story? Well, there are uncharted territories, unexplored lands that we are yet to discover. In fact, those territories are way bigger and mysterious than the society and the world that we have been acquainted with. Languages and the jargons of the marketplaces and the business alleys, all of these things keep ruminating in our head. But as we unlayer ourselves and we reach in this open space inside of us, for the first time we discover that we were imprisoned all the while. I'm reminded of Plato's cave, where there are some prisoners who are in a cave and they have only seen shadows. So when a person is finally able to unfetter himself and go out in the real world, he tells the other prisoners about it, but they cannot believe it. Because until now, their entire existence has been based upon those shadows. Similarly, in society and in the entire conditioning that we have. We are acquainted with just one perspective and just one layer of life. And language is so limited. Just think about it, how vast the universe is, how diverse the geography of Earth and of different places is, how much of an experience we can get if we just let ourselves be open to the experiences. The silence of the woods, the night sky, the open valleys that sort of invite us. In all of those things, there is no language. And in fact, whenever we try to express them in a language, we are reducing them and limiting them. The conceptualizations and the formulations that we do mentally are nothing but the efforts of ego to somehow survive when the expanse of the existence seems overwhelming. And whenever someone is able to experience reality in the naked form, in the nascent form, in the unconditioned form, language is one of the things that goes away. Well, I hope we all learned something in this story and let me know how you interpret this story. I'll see you in the next video.